Pleasure is not the goal of man, but knowledge. Pleasure and happiness come to an end. It is a mistake to suppose that pleasure is the goal. The cause of all the miseries we have in this world is that men foolishly think pleasure to be the ideal to strive for. After a time, man finds that it is not happiness, but knowledge towards which he is going, and that both pleasure and pain are great teachers, and that he learns as much from evil as from good. As pleasure and pain pass before his soul, they leave upon it different pictures, and the result of these combined impressions is what is called a man's character. If you take the character of any man, it really is but the aggregate of tendencies, the sum total of the bent of his mind. You will find that misery and happiness are equal factors in the formation of that character. Good and evil have an equal share in the molding of his character, and in some instances misery is a greater teacher than happiness. In studying the great characters of the world, it, it has produced, I dare say, in the vast majority of cases, it would be found that it was misery that taught more than happiness. It was poverty that taught more than wealth. It was blows that brought out the inner fire more than praise. Stuttered a bit there, but I think you get the message. That's another quote from Swami Vivekananda. Uh, again, he's discussing karma and the effects of karma upon us. Um, and in particular, he's dealing with the juxtaposition of good and bad karma, but I would almost say two types of bad karma with pleasure masquerading as good karma. Um, I would say that he's not so much saying that pleasure is bad, but pleasure is tricky because it kind of leads you to the fallacy that that's the end result, that's what I want, that's the ultimate goal in life. Now, in the Indian way of things, that's just called the path of pleasure. India, more than any other cultures, has got pleasure down pat how to feel the maximum amount of pleasure in one's life. They wrote the Kama Sutra, after all. Um, <clears throat> but, after a while, how many orgies can you, you know, handle? You get bored after a while. And, ultimately, Richard Corey went home last night and put a bullet through his head, right? He, he had all this money and pleasure and everything he wanted, but it meant nothing to him. The Book of Ecclesiastes, the same idea. So pleasure appears to be empty. Happiness comes to an end. Happiness with one's lot in life. I have a big house, say, I'm rich, wife, beautiful children, everything like that. I don't have all those, but uh, you know. <laughs> uh, let's just say that I do have all that. Rich, powerful, you know, everything, I've got it made. And I come home one day and I say, what is all this? You know, that song from the talking head, same as it ever was. Um... <clears throat> So you just sort of, okay, this is it? No. <laughs> You're learning the hard way that pleasure is okay, but it won't get you where you want to go. Um, good karma can be tricky. Good karma, enjoyable things in life might create good karma, but ultimately they're snares as well. Um, and he, again, raises the idea that agony and misery actually can teach you uh, an enormous amount about yourself, about life, about the world, about everything. Um, so it's hard to say what value, even uh, that, what value pleasure or suffering have, or pain even. Um, India is full of sadhus to this day, I believe. I haven't been there in twenty years, but I believe that it's still got its requisite number of guys that lay on beds of nails and fl flagellate themselves and things like that for the reason of um, overcoming the agonies of this world. I'm sure some of them actually just get a masochistic high out of it. But there are those who say, no, no, I have to overcome everything that life can, come at, can attack me with. I have to overcome all the agonies of this world. Jane literature is... Um, replete with things like that, where they just go on and on and on about the sufferings of this world and how m one must take them on. Um, because only by accepting all suffering can you actually transcend suffering. It's kind of, there's a bit of Christianity in there, too. Um, <clears throat> there's an interesting quote from um, 
Jacob's Ladder. I go back to this quote once in a while on YouTube. Um, a guy uh, has been... Um, a guy is in a hospital, and he's had hallucinations, and he, for a moment there, he believed he was in hell because uh, he saw demons and everything like this. And he's in the hospital because he's quite sick. Um, deathly sick, perhaps. So, um, his... Uh, Male nurse, sort of his guardian angel, played very well by Danny Aiello, actually, um, says the following, and he's quoting, or he's talking about Meister Eckhart. We all know who he is. Eckhart saw hell, too. He said, The only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of life. Your memories, your attachments. They burn them all away. But they're not punishing you, he said. They're freeing your soul. So if you're frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. <laughs> it's that odd thing about um, evil and good. It's hard to tell which is which a lot of the time. I, there was a, On my previous video, there was a little thread there on Kali. And Kali is this ferocious Hindu goddess that scares everybody when they come into contact and he's often even used as something of a bogeyman for people trying to um, caricature Hinduism <clears throat> but that's if you go back to the quote here from Meister Eckhart she looks ferocious and terrifying but what is she actually doing she's destroying that which is impermanent and is actually just a distraction from other things um, she'll reduce your pleasure to ashes and you'll she'll overload you with enough pain for you to understand that um, happiness comes to an end and you'd better learn to live without it and you'd better learn to thrive without it. Um, misery is a fact of life. But misery can also be, I suppose, um, a surfeit of another Hindu goddess, Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth. Um, all Hindu gods have two natures. Many natures, I guess. Lakshmi could have the um, the effect of destroying you, showering you with wealth. You know, we all know about the guy who wins a lottery and drinks himself to death in his basement. I think a guy in England did that, actually. Um, so, yeah, money doesn't necessarily do you good. Pleasure doesn't necessarily do you good. You can get HIV from pleasure. You can uh, overdose on heroin, that kind of thing. Um, so, karma, good and bad ultimately are tricky things that you have to sort of beware of. You have to be just as suspicious of happiness as you have to be of, say, depression, um, because it sets you up for a nasty new lesson. Um, depression can actually, as I said, I'm, I'm one of the few depressives whose life may actually have been improved by it, because early in life, I had to face all the existential questions in my early 20s, and I had nobody to discuss it with. I learned the hard way um, how to make something of my place here in this universe. Um, anything could happen between now and when I'm pushing up daisies, I don't know. But, you know, it does seem to... My, my brush with severe depression um, does seem on the larger canvas of my life to have been something that I've learned a lot from and that I have benefited from. So it's hard to say when you're in it whether or not even your suffering is bad or your pleasure or your joy is good. It's all karma and it's all tricky. You can never really know what um, what it actually is going to do to you at the, in, at the end of the day. Um, and that's, I suppose, why in the Eastern way of things, ultimately we want out of karma. We don't want any more of this. Um, <clears throat> and the only way to, again, get rid of your karmic burden is the hard way, the long way. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be hard, but it might be long, as I say. I, uh, I have some sort of means of trying to eliminate the... or not eliminate, but rather um, assimilate the harsher experiences that I have had. I would just use the word experience as another word for karma here, or karma is just another word for experience. Um, 
when you're in depression, you cannot imagine anything good about it. The, all good is absent. William Styron, in his book Darkness Visible, essentially said that depression is evil. Um, but I bet that if you had spoken to him after he'd come out of it, you would ask him, okay, Nietzsche says what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Has this made you stronger? I'm almost certain he would have said absolutely. Um, because it, had, it seems to have had that effect on me. Um, it's had some negative effects, I suppose, but a lot of the positives, like the extreme, I don't know, willpower that I seem to have, I seem to have an abnormally strong willpower, that comes from depression, and I suppose as well from Catholic education. So that you would think that this sort of thing is bad karma, but bad karma that has, at the end of the day, a bizarrely good effect on you. Good karma might be a wonderful memory, but at the end of the day, it binds you. You get too caught up in thinking about the past, and you're not thinking about where you're headed. Um, as I say, I have very fond memories of when my mother was alive, but it's not healthy to dwell too much on this, because life has to be lived right now. I have a wife and child. I have responsibilities. I have a future to think about. I have a day to plan when I wake up in the morning. Um, the, even the positive karma, the positive experiences of my past have to be managed and placed in such a place in my past that they don't taint my present and future. Because even the good stuff can do that. Um, things were so much better in the old days, so I hate the world. Archie Bunker type thinking. Um, good memories can have a negative effect on you if you're not paying attention. Vivekananda um, points this out very effectively, if you ask me. You never really know if pain is actually bad or if pleasure is actually good. Uh, or if even suffering is bad or happiness is good. It's all a tricky thing. You never know where you're headed. Um, as I said, I read a book once on the autobiography of an Englishman who had joined the French Foreign Legion in the 1920s, and he said, you might think that this is insane, but what I learned in the Foreign Legion was compassion for my fellow man. Now, you don't join a pack of rough, murderous mercenaries to learn compassion. I would, as I said in another video, I would assume that that would be an environment where compassion is completely absent, and in fact it's deliberately eradicated. But, he said, strange though it may seem, I learned compassion in the French Foreign Legion of all places. In the quote about Meister Eckhart from the movie Jacob's Ladder, the man is being cast into hell, he feels. Um, but again, his guardian angel says, you think you're being cast into hell. They're just preparing you for heaven. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that I believe in heaven or hell or anything like this, but I understand the metaphor. I understand the... I can read the code in what that metaphor, what that quote from Meister Eckhart uh, actually means. I grasp what the, the point is. You never know. <laughs> but, and you never know and it's ultimately knowledge that you want anyway. You don't want the um, the pleasures and pains in and of themselves. You want the end result. You want what they provide you with. Knowledge. <laughs>